This video is about the city-states of Athens and Sparta and a conflict that they engaged in called the Peloponnesian War. Sparta was a city-state, you can see it on this map, and it's located on a peninsula in southern Greece. Sparta's economy was based on agriculture, but they didn't do the farming themselves. They invaded neighboring city-states to take prisoners as slaves, and those slaves worked as farmers for the Spartans. These slaves were known as helots. They also captured artisans and merchants from conquered territories who worked for the Spartans. These artisans and merchants that were captured and more were known as the periokoi. Together, the helots and the periokoi outnumbered Spartans by a ratio of 20 to 1. Because they were largely outnumbered by their slave population, the Spartans prided themselves on having a very strict militaristic society. Their life was organized around their army. Men wanted to become first-rate soldiers, and women wanted to raise strong sons. Spartans did not build a wall to defend their polis. This made them unlike other city-states. They believed that their reputation and their strong army was enough to protect them from any enemies who might try to think about attacking. In Sparta, newborn infants were inspected by government officials to see if they were healthy. If the newborn looked sick or weak, it was left on a hillside to die, and this once again shows that the Spartans were bent on making sure they had very, very strong individuals who were going to be able to engage in military service. At age 7, boys were sent to the military school, and at 20, they joined the army. At 30, they were expected to marry, and at 60, they could retire. Women in Sparta were raised to be as healthy and strong as possible. They were trained in gymnastics, wrestling, and boxing. Because oftentimes the men of Sparta were away at war, the women enjoyed more freedom than women in other city-states. They could go shopping in the marketplace, they could own property, and they could express opinions on public issues. However, women in Sparta still were not able to participate in the government. The Spartan government was headed by two kings. However, the king's only real jobs were to lead the army in battle and to conduct religious services. The real power in Sparta was in a group of people called the Assembly. The Assembly was made up of all male citizens over the age of 30, and they passed laws and made decisions about war and peace. Now we'll move on to a city-state that was very, very different from Sparta, and it's called Athens. Athens, as you can see on the map, is a city-state in central Greece, and it's important to know that it was named after the goddess Athena. The government in Athens was very different than the government in Sparta. Starting in 507 BC, Athens created a constitution that allowed all free men born in city-state to participate in government. Now this shows us that all male citizens were seen as equal before the law, regardless of wealth. As long as they weren't slaves and if they had been born in Athens, then they had an equal status. A council of 500, which was open to any citizen, who was a male obviously, carried out the daily government business in Athens. They used a jury system to decide court cases. Also, all non-citizens in Athens, which included women, foreign-born males, and slaves, they were still excluded from politics. Everyone was not able to participate. If you were growing up in Athens, your life would depend on your social and economic status. It would affect the sort of training and skills that you were taught. Athenian citizens were required to educate their sons, and this was because all Athenian males were expected to hold public office at some time in their life. Boys would enter school at age 7, and they graduated at age 18. While in school, they studied a lot of different subjects, and this is where Athens is different from Sparta, because in Athens, they would study things like arithmetic and geometry and drawing and music, in addition to gymnastics. As they got older, they also studied rhetoric, which was the art of public speaking. And that was important because if you were ever on trial in Athens, you were expected to defend yourself. After graduating school, men served two years in the army, 
starting at 18. Now, for women living in Athens, most girls did not receive a formal education. Instead, girls learned their household duties from their mothers. They did not attend formal school. So from 431 BC to 404 BC, the city-states of Athens and Sparta fought against each other in a conflict known as the Peloponnesian War. So it was a conflict that was fought between Athens and Sparta, and at the basis of the conflict was the fact that Athens was growing and gaining control or influence over much of ancient Greece, sometimes direct control over other city-states, and sometimes just an economic control over trade in the area. Sparta became the leader of an anti-Athenian alliance. These were city-states that were resisting the influence of Athens as Athens was becoming strong. Even though we think of Sparta as a, a very strong militaristic society, it was actually Athens that was expected to win the Peloponnesian War until something happened, and that event was a plague weakened Athens, and Sparta received gold from Persia to build a strong navy because the Persians wanted to control trade and move into the area, and they couldn't do that when Athens was dominating Greece. So, once Athens gets weakened by the plague, and Sparta gets strengthened financially by the Persians, a different group of people, the Spartan navy wiped out the Athenian navy. Then, Spartans were able to attack the actual city-state of Athens, and the Athenians were forced to surrender to the Spartans in 404 BC. It's really important to understand the Peloponnesian War, because the effects of the war help explain why the Greeks were eventually taken over. After the war, almost all of the Greek city-states were weakened. Many were dead, many were unemployed, and fighting had destroyed much of the land. Also, with the war, the political organization crumbled, and eventually Greece was taken over by a group of people called the Macedonians in 350 BC. 